First of all, I want to thank uh, God for allowing us uh, to be back over here, making a way for this to happen. Uh, it's been a lot of work. I want to thank everybody that had a part in putting this together. Uh, it's such a blessing. And, uh, this is home to me. Uh, and when my home is tore up, I worry about it. Uh, but uh, it's so good to be back here today. And I thank everybody that took a part in, in putting this back together for us. So we've got uh, several things going on this morning. Uh, we've got uh, a children's program, a Christmas program. They're going to sing for you. And then I think we've got an adult choir going on. Uh, what it is, we've got a new sound system. And, uh, uh, it's a digital thing and uh, Bluetooth. And, uh, they're like me. They don't know anything about Bluetooth. Uh, but anyway, they're trying to figure that out with the old system. I think we'll be okay. So just bear with us if we have some difficulty with that. We're trying to get the kinks out of it. But it is good to see all of you this morning. I pray that you've had a good week. We're looking forward uh, to Christmas. It's right around the corner. Uh, all we need is a snow. Now don't put me. Don't no. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is. It's good to see all of you this morning. I hope you've had a good week. I pray that God will bless you today for being here this time. Uh, we call it the grand opening of our new auditorium. And uh, I hope you like what the people have done here. Uh, and God is really blessed. Uh, so we're just we're just glad to be here this morning. It doesn't make a difference where we worship. It's just a building, uh, but it's home to us. Uh, all right, we still got people coming in. I think they're almost ready. I'm not sure. Uh, the Lord knows we're ready to try. Okay, we're ready to try. All right, it is good to see all of you this morning. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you this morning. God, for the work you've done on this place, and God, you've allowed it. God, you uh, gave everyone the initiative, God, to just come and put this thing back together. And I thank you, God, for that. Thank you for a church, Lord, that loves you this much. Lord, today, as we worship you, we rejoice in the fact that we can worship you. No matter where we are, uh, Lord, you're always with us. We thank you for that. Lord, bless your people today. As they go out of this place today, this old building, Lord, I pray that in their heart they'll say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord today. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I'll take it away. Amen. 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 Good morning. How are you? Good. You know what? God knew this was going to happen. Let the text God bless and cross. So we're going to go with it, right? Okay, you guys can move down here. This morning the kids are going to do a, a play called Manger Tales. Now, we need y'all's help. We got a few practices in because of sickness and all the other stuff. So they don't know the songs as well as they probably should. But you guys do. So we need y'all to help us sing when it's time to sing, okay? We don't have words up there for you. So just go along with it. You guys sit down. Good morning and welcome to Terry Prince Live. I'm going to begin a four-part series on the story of Christmas. We've all read the story from the Gospels of Luke and Matthew, how the baby Jesus was born, but we've never heard the story from the people who were there. I tried to get a hold of those people to tell their stories, but none of them would talk to me. Um, we tried to get on one person's boat, but anyway. Anyways, I've got the next best thing, but we're going to meet the animals from the Christmas story, starting with my guest today, Doug the Donkey. Hey, Gary. It's Terry. It is. Doug, anyways, do you remember meeting the baby Jesus? Oh, 
what a little cutie. He was a cutie. Terry, he had the cutest little dude. So you saw the baby Jesus? <coughs> saw him? I carried him all the way to Bethlehem. I thought he was born in Bethlehem. He was, but who do you think carried his mother and the child across the desert? Was it you? Well, it wasn't a jackrabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Neither can I. Oh, that was you? Oh. <laughs> can't imagine a jackrabbit carrying a pregnant lady. And neither can I. She'd say, you mind if I hop on? He'd say, you mind if I hop away? Screaming. When did you know that the baby Jesus was someone special? I knew Jesus was special before he was even born. How? Because of his mother and father. They talked about him on the way to that bridge. Can't stop talking about him. Now you mind, most parents are like that even if their kid is born. Tell me about it. <laughs> Not all parents find out about their baby from the angel. An angel went to Mary and said, you don't have a baby. Then he went to Joseph and said, all that stuff Mary told you about the baby is true. That's quite the story. Tell me about it. I was stopping for a drink of water when I first hit it. I was so stunned I didn't spit to it. Really? <laughs> Water shot out my nostrils. It was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Did you really believe that he was a gift from God when you heard about it from the angels? Well, I was a little skeptical at first. Most times you hear guys talking about seeing angels, they turned out to be a little nut. <laughs> but then the baby was born. These shepherds came as thin some wise guys. You mean the wise men? I don't know how wise they were. They brought gold spice, gold and spices to a newborn baby. You know what a baby needs? Diaper. But you saw Yes, when I saw them, I believe this was no regular baby. This was a special baby. And he did have a cute dinner. Thank you for sharing your story with us, Doug. We'll be back after work, after these words. This is how the birth of Jesus to the side. His mother Mary was placed to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to the public disgrace, he, in mind, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her from the Holy Spirit she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will conceive us and give birth, will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage. Until, the, until she gave her to us name. And he gave him the name Jesus.
fly. My next guest is one of the animals that was there. This Thank you to our sponsor, whatever stereo that is. Um, this is, my next guest is one of the animals that was in the stable the night that Jesus was born. She was born and raised in Bethlehem, and she joins us now live. Please welcome Clara the Cow. Thanks for having me, dude. It's Terry. It is. Clara, I understand that you lived in the stable where Jesus was born. Oh, what a little lady face. He was so cute. He had the sweetest skiggle. And oh, that dimple. That dimple was adorable. You remember Jesus being born? I'll never forget it. You must have been thrilled to see him. Absolutely not. What? <laughs> I was not at all thrilled with having a bunch of people in my, in my house that night. But it was. All day long. Greg the goat kept came in his kept saying, the inn is filling up. They're running out of rooms. And I kept saying, no way to send people out here. Stables are for animals, not people. But what do you think happens around bedtime? People in the stable? A man, a donkey, and a pregnant woman who immediately goes into labor. She went into labor right away? As ready as she was, I'm surprised she made it to Bethlehem. But she had the baby in the stable? Oh, yes. And it's very difficult to sleep with the stable. I guess so. Cow has to have her sleep, Terry. It's Terry. And you can't sleep when someone's trying to birth the baby. I see your point. Oh, but when that baby was born, you just knew he was special. You knew right away. Well, the star and the shepherds kind of clued me in. But yes, the baby changed everything. The whole stable just felt different because of his presence. I guess that made everything okay, huh? Well, almost. I was so mad at the For what? Because you don't put a baby into a stable, especially if that, if that baby is the son of God. Good point. So, the innkeeper didn't get the milk for a few days. Uh oh. Yes, and boy were his customers mad when they didn't have milk for their frosted flakes. <laughs> frosted flakes? Who's ever heard of frosted flakes in ancient Bethlehem? Well, who's ever heard of a talking cat? Good. Good point. Um, talking with Claire the Cow, a resident of Bethlehem, about her memories of the baby Jesus. Oh, that dude. We'll be right back with another amazing animal Christmas memory.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was going to Syria, and everyone went into their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of the of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in the manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Of course I did. I had to see this 
thank myself, Jerry. <laughs> Do you remember anything that they said? Well, he was tiny and he was sleeping in the hay inside a manger. And he had the cutest little dimple. Afterwards, the shepherds headed back to the fields, praising God and telling all of us about the fat baby. Amazing. You know, Jerry, it always seemed kind of odd to me why the good Lord would invite a bunch of smelly shepherds to see his newborn son. But they but then I thank God for just being neighbor and he sent Jesus for everybody. So he wanted to make sure everybody knew they was welcome, even the smelly shepherds. A beautiful message to end this interview. And a smelly one. I mean it, Jerry, them boys never back. <laughs> No, the kids. Oh, I got it. Adios, fuckaroo. <laughs>
can all agree that that was a wise decision. <laughs> Please welcome Cody the Camel.
of the world, he would bring something far more valuable thing than gold or frankincense or myrrh. He would bring eternal life. I still get people today asking me about our journey, what the star look like, how much gold you bring, did you bring, how long did it take to get here, get there. I tell them none of that really matters. We are not the story, the gift, and the manager is manager. Ma man major is the real story of Christmas. Wise words from a wise camel. Thank you, Cody. My pleasure, Terry. <coughs> And now you know the story from the animals and the nativity. So long. <laughs>
went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gift of gold, frankincense, and mud. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to the country by another route.
wonderful story they presented. Y'all know we've got a big crowd here today, and I cannot let you get out of here without taking an offering, so we're going to do that. <laughs> All right. Would you stand with us? Stretch your legs just a minute. special program these kids. What an amazing job they did presenting your birth. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for that birth. We rejoice in your name. Thank you for this offering now. Bless as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
two sister-in-law drove seven hours to get down here for this service. They'll be here all day today, and, and thank God they're going home tomorrow. <laughs>
they found what they were looking for. Uh, they brought forth their first child, uh, a little baby, having to be born in a manger. Uh, and, and they recognized it, and they saw, and, and like the little donkey while ago, I forget his name, uh, they, uh, what was it? Dud the donkey, yeah, I don't know forget that. Uh, he was telling about, uh, more likely, uh, Joseph and Mary had talked about having this child and it being the Messiah and uh, the Son of God, how that could be. And, uh, I cannot explain that to you this morning. It was the work of the Holy Spirit of God. It's all, the only way I know how to explain that. But scripturally, there's scriptures that back that up. Number one, it was prophetic. Uh, the Bible prophesied of the coming of the Messiah. That's how the wise men knew He was coming. Uh, they had read the scripture. They knew uh, that this star that they saw over Bethlehem, they knew to follow it because they had read the scripture that said a star would rise out of Israel. And, and so they, they knew all these things. And so Mary and Joseph absolutely did not miss Christmas. They were there for the birth of the Savior of the world. And that's why we celebrate every year in December the birth of Christ. Now, we don't know the original date. Some, some have it dated in April and others have different dates. And, and we don't know, but it was set a long time ago. I believe the first Christmas was celebrated uh, in 336 A.D., uh, something like that. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we don't really know what day exactly it was in the year, but we do know approximately. And so we celebrate December 25th as Jesus' birthday. And so Mary and Joseph found Christ in the Christmas. And so uh, the shepherds that we just talked about, they absolutely found Christ in Christmas. When the angel uh, came down and, and uh, spoke to those shepherds, no doubt they were uh, perplexed, they were troubled. They didn't know what to think uh, when these shepherds appeared in the sky. If you could imagine with me uh, them doing that. But something I, I learned, uh, he said, well, how did, how did they recognize where, where to go and how to do that or how to find the baby? And notice it said the baby was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Well, I got to wondering about that. And it, one of the commentators made a statement, and I think this may be pretty true. It said that the shepherds, the sheep, the flock that they were watching over were the sheep that were going to be presented for the Passover. These were Passover lambs that they were taking care of. And in order for them to be without spot and blemish, the, uh, the, the history tells us that those shepherds would swaddle those lambs in swaddling clothes just like Jesus was swaddled in swaddling clothes laying in a manger. And so uh, that being said, they had no problem when they walked into that manger, that, that little stall that night, and because they had held the lambs that they were holding, but they beheld the Lamb of God when they found Him laying in the manger with swaddling clothes on. They recognized who He was because they were taking care of the lambs that were to be sacrificed, but He was going to become the sacrifice for you and I. It was. So the shepherds did not miss Christmas. They were there. They knew uh, what it was. And they knew that Jesus Christ was the reason they were there. Uh, because the angels had declared it. And so we see uh, that the shepherds did not miss Christmas. Uh, there was a couple of people uh, in the next few chapters. I don't know if I can walk this way far enough without squealing. Um, in, the, in the scripture just past this, there was a... There was a man of old age. He, did, he certainly didn't miss Christmas. The Bible says that this man, Simeon, had waited his whole life. He said, I don't want to die, Lord, until I hold the Savior of the world in my hands. And lo and behold, they brought the child on the day for him to be circumcised. Simeon, or Simeon was in the temple. And he recognized the Lord wrapped in swapping clothes. 
eight days old. And he held the baby. He said, now I, my eyes have seen the salvation yeah. of the world and held him in his hands. Oh, he didn't miss Christmas. He was right there because he knew that this was Christ's mass. Amen. It was. Then there was a lady right after that. Her name was Anna. Anna had lived in the temple. As a matter of fact, she had not left the temple, the Bible says, for 84 years. She was a widow and had devoted her life to Christ, the coming Christ. She had never seen Jesus. She had heard about Him. She had served Him and believed by faith in Him all her life. But she had never got a chance to see the Savior of the world. And when they brought Him in, she went to, to, up to the temple where the circumcision was and beheld the young child. And if she, her, her whole life, she had waited for that one moment to meet Jesus. She didn't miss Christmas at all. She was there. That Christ arrived. You see, a lot of people in the world today, they miss Christmas because they haven't seen Christ. They, they see all the gifts and they see all the family gatherings, they see all the big meals, they see all the hustle and bustle and all the church services with all the songs and the music and the choir. They see all but they miss Christmas because they have never seen the Christ. Amen. I'm glad you see it. I'm glad you're here celebrating Christ today. Because if you hadn't met Him the way I met Him, yeah. you probably wouldn't be here. That's right. He is the Savior. I didn't miss Christmas. I haven't missed a Christmas since 1982. Christmas before that didn't mean much to me. It was all about gifts. But after that, yeah. it was all about Jesus. Amen. The Savior being birthed in the world. And the, 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 that's a good story. And I can stop right there and we can go in. But I got to tell you, there were some people that were so close, but they missed they missed it. They were right there. But they could not see Christ. Yeah. All of a sudden, the wise men saw this light. They didn't miss Christmas. Yeah. It was two years later, but they found him. Yeah. They kept searching until they found the Christ. Well, I could preach on that for a while. How long did you search for Jesus? Yeah. You probably didn't. But Jesus was searching for you all the time. And so the wise men found Jesus. Anna found it. All these people, they found Jesus. They found Christmas. They found Christ in Christmas. But, number one, three people on the show. The innkeeper missed Christmas. He was at his door. He wasn't born yet, but he was right there knocking on his door and said, would you please let me in? Yeah. And the innkeeper said, I have no room for you in my inn. Just like many people today, they may go to church, they may live good lives, but when Jesus comes knocking on your heart's door, you're just like that innkeeper. You'll miss Christmas this year if you don't open the door and say, yes, I've got room for you in my life and put Him in your life. It'll be the best Christmas you'll ever experience. Amen. If you put Christ in your life. King Herod missed Christmas. He had the wise men they're looking for Jesus. And he even said, if y'all go and find him, come back and tell me where he's at so I can worship him. He said that. But he had no intention of worshiping Jesus. He wanted to kill Jesus. He missed Christmas all the way around.
because he would not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. All he was to King Herod was a threat to his stupid throne. Listen to me. Jesus may pose a threat to you in the lifestyle that you live, in the way that you live. He may pose a threat to you this morning. And it may call you say, well, if I take Jesus, he's going to change my whole life. Yeah, he will. I promise you he will. There's some things that you've got to get out of the way in order to find Christ in the Christmas. King Herod missed it. The innkeeper missed it. And lastly, most importantly, the religious leaders and teachers missed Christmas. Who are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about when they called them to the king's house. All the religious leaders, the people in the church, and the teachers in the church, they gathered together and said, uh, where is this Christ? And they said, we don't have time for that nonsense. We're not going to see this child. He means nothing to us. We have our set way of re religion and we're satisfied. We're, we're there. Doesn't that sound like most churches in America today? They don't want Jesus in their service because Jesus will disrupt the service. They don't want Jesus in their service because they're afraid the Holy Ghost will move through the service and somehow touch them and make them change. And he will. They miss Christ because they do not believe that Christ was born for the sake of the world. That's right. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never truly experienced the greatest Christmas you could ever find in your life. It's right here. You may be an innkeeper. You may have your doors or your door, door and heart locked this morning and you're not willing to let him come in. There's no room for Jesus in your life. Or maybe you're like King Herod. Maybe you're so high in a position in your life that you think you don't need Jesus. Or maybe you're just too religious. Come on. And you think you've already arrived at the gates of heaven. You don't need Jesus. You've done this all on your own. Come on. I got bad news for you. You'll never make it to heaven without. Jesus. That's right. That's right, man. It'll come out. So, this morning, let me ask you, have you found Christmas? Have you found Christ in the Christmas? Or have you missed it? <coughs> have you walked in these doors or some doors in a church somewhere all your life and you believe uh, that you were being good and you were doing the right things, but you never really Jesus, and you never let him really come in. Yeah. If that's you this morning, these old altars are ready for you this morning. Get out on your knees and cry out and say, God, that's me. I've never truly been saved by your father's grace. We're going to have a song right now. I don't know who's playing a song with somebody else. <coughs> have you missed Christmas? These people did because they're not willing to let Jesus come into their life. Don't be that way. Let Christ come into your heart this morning. Let Him change your life forever. He will. I promise you, He will. If you'll just open your hearts to Him this morning and let Christ, the Savior of the world, let you. You see, He was born in a mansion. You can be born again in prior to bringing him into Bible Methodist Church this morning. All you've got to do is let Jesus come in. Would you stand with me this morning as we sing? <laughs> Maybe you just want to come this morning and thank God for this Christmas season. Thank you for your family. Or just thank you for being born the Son of God. If God speak in your heart this morning, you come. The so altar's always open.
Maybe you want to thank Him for your children today. Maybe you've got a child that's way out there. You just want to thank Him for it. Would you come this morning? Maybe you just want to pray for your family this morning. Won't you come? Knocking on your heart's door this morning. Are you born again? Oh, Nicodemus came to Jesus one night in the dark of night. And he said, Jesus, what do I need to do to enter heaven? And Jesus, quite frankly, told him, You must be born again. You must have a relationship with me. Oh, if you haven't got that relationship this morning, you need it. You need it desperately in your life. Come to Jesus. Open your heart's door to them. Don't miss Christmas this year. It's right here.